don't know if you guys have been visiting the front lawn before this. It has become kind of ritualistic for me to do this. So what I will do yet again is come nearly center stage, bow down my hands in namaskar. And the only expectation is that you say the namaskar with equal energy back to me. So shout out if you need to project as much as you can. I will come and do my namaskar and you will do yours from where you are. Ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> welcome to the 15th edition of the Jaipur Literature Festival, protected by Dettol, Banega Swast, India. We are at the front lawn, and this session is presented by Rajasthan Patrika. We are delighted to introduce 1946, Last War of Independence, Royal Indian Navy Mutiny, presented by Rajasthan Patrika. The mutiny of the Royal Indian Navy, which broke out on the 18th of February, 1946, delivered a mortal blow to the British power in India. The brave young men that dared to defy an empire, the Azad Hind, led a movement so commanding that it is said to have provoked Britain's retreat and ultimate rel relinquishing of India. Pramod Kumar, founder and publisher of Roli Books, has conceived and produced some of the boldest, most definitive and acclaimed titles relating to India and its heritage in his career of nearly four decades. His book, 1946, Naval Uprising That Shook the Empire, is an enlightening, necessary history of the salient saga and the significance of India and its people to that most crucial of British instruments, the Navy. In conversation with naval historian Srikant Kesnur and editor News 9 Plus and author Sandeep Unnisan, Kapoor discusses this integral yet underrepresented segment in the history of independence. Ladies and gentlemen, I will now invite the speakers to the stage one by one. May we first welcome Mr. Pramod Kumar. Pramod Kumar, the founder and publisher of Roly Books. I'm so sorry, ma'am. My bad. Thank you for correcting me. Mr. Pramod Kapoor, the founder and publisher of Roly Books, has over the course of his illustrious career conceived and produced award-winning books that have proven to be game changers in the world of publishing. In 2016, he authored the internationally acclaimed Gandhi, an illustrated biography published in 11 editions in most major languages worldwide. He was conferred with the prestigious Chevalier de Légion d'Honneur for his contribution towards producing books that have changed the landscape of Indian publishing. He is also a recipient of the Mahatma Award 2021 and Aditya Birla Group Initiative for Lifetime Achievement for his work in publishing and literature. Ladies and gentlemen, I won't make a mistake this time, Mr. Pramod Kapoor. Mr. Srikant Kesnur, in his 36-year-old career in the Navy, has commanded two frontline ships, done numerous operational and afloat tenures, then entered a diplomatic tour of duty in East Africa, been involved in teaching and training assignments, and been involved in many outreach activities of the Navy. He has been the lead writer and chief editor of 11 Navy books and monographs, apart from many other publications. Currently, the officer in charge, Naval History Project, the CMDE, did his PhD from Mumbai University, and has five other postgraduate degrees in sciences and social sciences. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Srikant Kesnur. I was just talking to them backstage, and they were all willing to exchange their bios with each other, all illustrious and decorated men. Mr. Sandeep Unnasan is the managing editor with India Today magazine and New Delhi, where he writes on national security. He is the author of Black Tornado, the three sieges of Mumbai 2611 and Operation X. The Bangla edition of the latter was released in Dhaka on November 8, 2021, in the run-up to the 50th anniversary celebrations of the 1971 war. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Sandeep Unnithan. These are decorated men. I am not. I will politely leave that stage and hand over the stage entirely to these three gentlemen. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. Oh. 
morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for being here today. And uh, I'm joined by two very distinguished speakers on the panel. You've just got their introductions. They need no introduction. And uh, uh, Commodore Srikant Kesnur, of course, is the naval historian, the official naval historian. It's very rare, I must say, for a serving naval officer to be uh, you know, at a book festival. That just tells you how he's very different from the rest of the Navy. And of course, Mr. Pramod Kapoor, who's uh, a naval historian now with this fascinating book on the last war of independence that we once called the RIN mutiny. It's now called uh, the last war of independence. The first war being the 1857 Sepoy mutiny, which became the first war of independence. And now we have this great book on the 1946 RIN mutiny. I want to start by asking all of you here, how many of you here present know of the Royal Indian Navy mutiny? Could you raise your hands? Oh, that's, that's a very impressive show of hands. I think at least 50% of the audience here has heard of the RIN mutiny, which is a good thing. Things are beginning to change. And uh, Pramod, I want to ask you, what got you to write a book on the 1946 RIN mutiny? Um, this was about seven years ago. I was um, researching for... I just published, in fact, um, my book, um, which was the biography of Mahatma Gandhi. Uh, and while researching that, which I also did for four or five years, I speed read uh, the hundred volumes of collected works of Mahatma Gandhi. Uh, coming to about volume 89, 90, um, which was around 46, I saw letters exchanged between Gandhiji and uh, Sardar Patel and few other people and how Sardar Patel's rip, uh, rip, uh, letter in the annexure to, to Gandhiji. It, it, it sounded not like a normal mutiny. If it was a normal mutiny, Gandhiji won't comment or, or Sardar Patel won't write that, look, I told uh, Jawahar not to come to Bombay. It will only inflame everything here. But yet he's coming, but let him come, we'll handle it. You know, that's all. I thought there must be much more. But so, uh, but somehow I couldn't include it in the, in the, in, in Gandhiji's biography. And though, so that was a bit of a guilt that I, something as big as this, I couldn't, I couldn't, uh, uh, you know, put in the book. But I thought this is worth pursuing and, um, uh, and read further. And, and more I read, more I, I got, uh, you know, it was, everything was like breaking news these days, you know, that you, that you, you know, everything was exciting that look how this is what these young ratings who were just about uh, 14 to, um, to 23, I, I thought there was a small film that was to be shown. But anyway, I can explain that now, uh, that how they, they rebelled against the Raj. And um, that is how I stumbled upon it, I would say, and included and start, decided to do a full book on it. I, I remember, uh, Pramod, I'd come to your house a couple of years back. Uh, it's uh, really interesting, the kind of research material that you showed me then. It was, I think, in boxes, literally boxes. And I, I kind of figured that that was the ore. That was the raw ore, which you kind of spun into this gold <laughs> of this uh, book on 1946. It's amazing. It's, uh, it's a book that uh, needs... Uh, it's a story that needs to be told and retold till it's you know completely internalized i mean i was a student of history i never read anything about the rin mutiny we were told uh, you know even in the navy uh, I, I have a naval background it was you know it was oh it was a mutiny about some uh, living conditions it was just dismissed like that which brings me to commodore k snoor srikant you've commanded some of the finest ships in the indian navy I visited you on some of them. Very impressive, first of class, first of kind ships. When you talk of a naval mutiny, how do you reconcile with something like a mutiny, uh, being a career naval officer? How do you uh, uh, reconcile this to a book on the uh, naval mutiny? Yeah, uh, morning. Uh, uh, morning, everyone. Uh, Sandeep, that's a very interesting question. Uh, the answer is you don't, uh, because uh, mutiny is mutiny. Uh, I, I think that it would be very, very uncomfortable for a Navy person to come to terms with this. But I think the fundamental difference that we need to see here 
is that the naval ratings rose in revolt against the British Raj. Um, and, and therefore, the Indian Navy itself has, over a period of term, called this as the naval uprising. Sometime, I think, in 1996-97, uh, we called it a naval uprising. We erected a memorial for the naval uprising in Bombay. We named two yard craft after uh, Dutt and Madan Singh, the, the uh, uh, people who were involved in this. So I think there was a clear understanding in the Navy that this was different. And of course, this year's tableau at the Republic Day highlighted the, the, the uprising. Uh, one of the important things, and this is a very small detail, uh, immediately after independence in Operation Peace in Junagadh, one of the officers who had sort of disobeyed orders was court-martialed and punished, and nobody said a thing about that. So I think independent India was very clear that if you revolted against your own uh, sovereign government, uh, it is different from a mutiny that... But I think your point is valid that to some extent it would be uncomfortable. Therefore, in the initial years after independence, the Indian Navy took some time and as the Navy grows in confidence, it grows uh, in size and magnitude, I think it's able to sort of uh, come to terms with many of these, except them. Admiral Avati, the great historian, said an interesting thing. He says, all great navies need an occasional mutiny. So I think we should be very thankful that this happened before independence. And Navy has taken it in stride in its march. And now we recognize those people as... Uh, freedom fighters. You've raised some very interesting points there. I'll come to that after we view this film that uh, Pramod mentioned. That's to bring you up to speed with what the RIN mutiny was all about. So, can we have the film now? Sant, you mentioned the fact about the Navy coming to terms with the mutiny now after more than uh, close to a century almost. Uh, Pramod, I wanted to ask you how, had, how did the political class of that time, our freedom fighters, our founding fathers, react to this mutiny in 1946, given the fact it was so close to Indian independence? Did it actually postpone India's, uh, rather bring forward India's independence in some way? Well, the political class at the time was, was clearly divided. There were uh, youngsters, um, and I would consider Nehruji was yeah, one of the youngsters, Aruna Asaf Ali, um, Jaya Jay Prakash Narayan, Achyut Madhwa. They, they, they were, these were the young socialists who were in, in Congress. They were on one side. Then you had the communists who, for various reasons, wanted to support uh, this, not wanted to, but actually supported in uh, the mutiny. Then there was the, the class like Sardar Patel, Maulana Azad, and Gandhiji would never come in front. He would always, um, you know, dictate, uh, so to say, from, from the background. 
and they were all against uh, the mutiny and, and their voice mattered much more than these youngsters. Um, at the time, they, 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 for two or three reasons, they didn't want this mutiny to, uh, to prolong. And uh, one of the reasons was, of course, that the talks were going on. Um, there was, um, they saw that the independence was imminent. Uh, they didn't want to, as I wrote, rock the board, you know. So um, that was one reason. Uh, they didn't want um, undue, um, or to say, I undue is the wrong word, but they didn't want um, the communists or these young sailors to get the credit for something for which they've been fighting 30, 40 years and made their own kind of sacrifices. So these were, and of course, the ostensibly the, the reason given later was that, look, we wanted uh, Navy in the independent India also. We can't have in indiscipline. But this was not a mutiny. This was a freedom movement. This was part of the freedom movement. For whatever reason, these, uh, these stalwarts, these polit politicians, didn't want to acknowledge it as, as such. I mean, these are my reasons, and this is what I, I gather from my study, that this is what, what happened. But the British was, was shaken, totally shaken, so much so that on the 18th of February, when the, uh, in the morning when the mutiny began, that very, very uh, um, afternoon in, in, in um, House of Lords and House of Commons, there was uh, the discussions, and uh, an announcement was made that very day that the cabinet mission uh, comprising of a top Navy um, administrator will be going to India to sort out the, uh, the modalities of transfer of power. Now, and then of course, there are many more uh, evidence later, letters exchanged and memoirs written where they have admitted that, look, it was, we could handle Gandhiji's um, non-cooperation movement and, and peaceful movement, etc. But if there was a a mutiny in all the three department of the defense forces, it will be very difficult for us to. So I have no doubt in my mind after studying it so thoroughly for so many years that this did hasten the independence. That's a, that's a very important point that you've made, the fact that this mutiny actually hastened India's independence. When do you think uh, we would have got independence had it not been for the mutiny? That would be purely speculation. I can't uh, put a date to it, but certainly at least a year or two later, we would have got, we were discussing modalities and, and, uh, and there were many more things that I'm sure, but Congress senior leaders were aware of, but the socialists were not aware of. So that would have come, that would have come, but I would say it, it just um, it sort of hastened it. And there's not, there's never a, a one reason for, um, for, for, uh, independence. There were so many things that were happening. There were, you know, resistance in, in all, all spheres, you know. So, but this was something I firmly believe that, that did, um, uh, did, did contribute majorly to the freedom movement and it did hasten uh, the, the independence. I want to bring in uh, Srikant on this point. Uh, you mentioned rock the boat. I think it is a very appropriate analogy. Srikant, firstly, how were you attached to this project? I, I believe you were an early collaborator, if I can use that word, on this project. Uh, did you, uh, you know, what drew you to this subject and, uh, and why did Pramod end up write, uh, you know, writing the book by himself? No, uh, Pramod, of course, uh, uh, is, is, I think he's brought out a wonderful book, but there's a backstory. Not so much with this. Uh, I was independently, I'd been approached by the Maritime History Society. I'd been interested in this subject for long, you know. So, so uh, uh, I was doing the book. I just about started. And that's when um, uh, informally through a friend and formally through the Navy channels, I was told uh, one gentleman, Pramod Kapoor, of course, I'd heard of him, uh, is doing this book. So, in fact, when I had my first telephone conversation with him, I don't know if he remembers, I said, Mr. Kapoor, I don't know whether to embrace and hug you or hate you because you are stealing me of my favorite project. At the same time, I want this thing written about so much. So the moment he said, I have done some seven or eight trips to the UK and I have nine or 10 trunks of research material, I said, I give up. You know? <laughs> so, so, but ladies and gentlemen, I must say, uh, this is fantastic. The book has such voluminous detail. 
such sort of uh, minute to minute coverage of the uprising of those days. There's no way I could have done that. And I think we must say hats off, I'm sure uh, Sandeep, you agree. Uh, the depth of research in this book is, is, is wonderful. And that, I think, if you allow me, I'll ask Pramod the question about that. Pramod, you dealt with on the political issues, I'll not get into it. But one of the important things you brought out very well is that the uprising was also accompanied by similar such movements in the uh, army and the air force at that time. And, you know, this was a Navy that had performed wonderfully well in World War II. Now, what is it that caused this sort of breakdown immediately in such a fine Navy? Uh, lots of us in the Navy clearly see it as uh, <coughs> lack of leadership, lack of good leadership amongst the top Britishers. And Admiral Godfrey's surrender or perish was one example of that extreme sort of lack of leadership. How do you see the top British naval leadership at that time or other leadership, which I believe precipitated many of the causes? What are your views on that? Well, let me, let me give it a, a descriptive reply to this. Um, you know, I think the, the, the seeds of mutiny were sown the very day they started their drive to uh, mobilize and recruit thousands of people from the villages um, with the with the advertisement luring the family and saying your child's life would be made in two years time he'll be given the commission and all sorts of things there is i have cited some now when you, from 3000 odd number that they were they climbed up to some 30 or 35000 people within no time because they needed cheap labor to fight the war and, and that's when they, they recruited them and uh, giving them all kinds of false promises. Within a month, all of them found out that this is not what we were told, and this that they were sandwiched in, you know, in a in a barrack of that could take ten. There were twenty people put in uh, dal. If they were ran short, they would put some uh, water into it. You know, there was racial discrimination of the worst kind. You know, uh, uh, RN, the Royal Navy people were given different, uh, you know, status than the R. So there was this kind of racial discrimination and bad language. They could handle it for a while. But when the time came, you know, in nine, after 1942, quit India movement, all the, uh, the senior leaders were arrested. Now, only few like Aruna Asaf Ali, who, was, who had a big role to play here, <laughs> Was I went underground? I mean, so much so that she actually um, uh, a reward was put on her head. Her, her properties were, uh, you know, uh, were sold and and so on. But she didn't surface. Only in 1945, towards uh, later part of 45, when all these leaders were released, that she came out. And that also gave a call given by Mahatma Gandhi, saying that I believe you're 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 down to a skeleton now. Come out and you know serve the country. So she. She came, but for what does she do when she comes? She she gets the she encouraged these uh, ratings of the sailors and say that we we should do something for for our country rather than serving a, a alien navy. And they were these these uh, these boys were also being taunted by the society who was who was saying that look at INA, you know these boys have have given their life and you guys are actually drawing salary from the same people. So all this were built up, and 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 then of course the the last thing was uh, uh, on the 18th the mutiny broke out a week before uh, Commander uh, uh, King uh, of of the of of HMIS Talwar the uh, shore establishment where the mutiny took place uh, where it started uh, actually used very very foul language you know sons of coolies and. Um, Many the language which I shouldn't be using here. This is what he, uh, you know, he, he said, and that that is the time when decided enough was enough. So it was not just food, it was not just food or bad living condition or racial discrimination, but it was also a freedom fervor. The the that that how, uh, and then there were of course a background which you will, uh, if you care to read the book, you will you will see that and how it was all, uh, you know, transpired and 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 became a, uh, such a big mutiny. But coming to your question about how did the, um, the, the officers, the British officers, officer, well, they, you also mentioned uh, um, Admiral Godfrey's. Godfrey's. Well, he, he did give a broadcast where he said that, you know, um, we, we have powerful forces with us. And 
um, and if you uh, if you dare to do any more than what you and you don't join the duty, we will not uh, hesitate to destroy the navy that we have built and loved so much. Now that added fuel to the fire, and uh, these uh, added to that, they, you know, he ordered uh, they ordered um, uh, a big warship. Uh, HMIS, uh, HMS uh, Glasgow. Glasgow, from which was anchored in Tr Trincomalee, to rapidly sail towards Bombay, just to scare these people. Low, low sorties were taken by the Air Force over dockyards and so on, just to say that, look, this is what we are. And what do, what do these young ratings do? They had captured all the ships. All the, ships, all the 78 ships around, in, uh, around the world where they were, there were about 30 of them around, uh, around Bombay. They trained their guns on the shore and said that if you if you do if you harm us, we will blow uh, the gateway of India and uh, and the yacht club and the and the and the uh, dockyard wherever they saw they thought they were the Britishers who were living. Of, uh, of course, it you know it was uh, like an eyeball to eyeball kind of situation, and and it was averted because but Sadar Patel came in and 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 so on and so forth. It wasn't very very well handled. They it was handled with iron hand and this not iron hand was not required at that time so uh, I, I was just uh, thinking about the ship that you mentioned uh, promote the hms glasgow is the only british ship to have sunk two allied warships in the second world war <laughs> entirely by accident so who knows how that would have played out you know in, but in i Mumbai. don't think i don't think they would have used it yeah. they were there were what some 12 or 14 guns mounted on there it was one of the right. most powerful sh ships you know? so here's the thing uh, promote 1946 it's a very interesting year in the on the calendar you know it's it's not 1945 which is the end of the second world war it's not 1947, which is the date of uh, year of India's independence. It's a bit like the 13th floor in many buildings. You know, it's it's there, but it's not there. You know, so what was the uh, political uh, uh, theater playing out? What was playing out on the political stage in 1946 that actually precipitated this? Uh, give, see, give us the background of the, uh, these that. these young uh, leaders, like the, the names of Aruna Safali and. And, and, and Jay Prakash Narayan sector and, and Minu Masani, I had forgotten, he was one of them. They, they, were, they had sensed that the people were getting impatient and they didn't believe in Gandhiji's peaceful transition, etc. They were getting impatient with, with that. And, and these, these, these um, young uh, ginger group, you can call in the, in, the, in the Congress, actually took advantage of that and, and um, started to to have um, you know meetings with them in that uh, in that flat in in Bombay on Marine Drive. Yes, on that Rivera flat number two, Rivera. I remember. So, and that's uh, that's where they would meet. And there were also uh, people from uh, IPTA, the Indian People's Theatre Association, like Afia, uh, the uh, Khwaja Ahmed Abbas, uh, Prithvi Raj Kapoor, and Sir Sahil Ludhianvi, etc. They all used to come and address them. They were all radicals at the time, you know. So this was they, 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 these kind of meetings radicalized uh, these young young sailors. This was the scenario where uh, the senior leaders were negotiating, and probably uh, in negotiation there is a fair amount of give and take, you know. But here was the young ginger group that was not willing to give anything but just take, you know. And this is this is the political scenario that was there at the time. Srikanth, you were talking earlier about uh, how the Navy has kind of come to terms with this as uh, an uprising. It's part of the freedom struggle now. So you've been in the Navy for over three decades. Uh, could you just recount how it kind of uh, your perceptions of this mutiny were kind of shaped from the time you joined and what it is today? I mean, has there been a gradual acceptance now, you, you know, I'm, I'm leading up to the Republic Day Parade of this year when you had a float with the RIN mutiny. So how has the Navy come to terms with it? Of now? course, um, I, I wouldn't use the term, you know, uh, come to terms with because uh, that, that still indicates a sense of discomfort. I think we've taken it in its stride. We've accepted it as a part of our history. And you'll see the very first Navy's history book under two in science by Admiral Satinder Singh, which, uh, Promote quotes. Uh, Admiral Satinder Singh's book has a complete chapter on the RIN mutiny. Then going on, the fact that these people were recognized as freedom fighters, the fact that we named two yacht craft after them. Uh, in 96, uh, uh, 97, uh, 50 years of independence, this was called the uprising. 
I think we did lots of very wonderful positive things leading up to the tableau this time, the naval uprising memorial in uh, Bombay. But I'd also like to bring in uh, how did we reconcile or how did we sort of uh, take it uh, through three characters, very interesting characters of the uprising. You have uh, Admiral Adhar Chatterjee, who becomes the future Navy chief. He's on Chamak. The, he has written a wonderful account of how he tries to reason with people. You have Admiral Krishnan, who was commanding the Shamsher. Moment he hears about this, he contrives an accident at sea, takes his ship out, and keeps out of the uprising completely. Uh, Gandhi is one of his officers. They want to train guns on RBYC. Krishnan sees the potential for trouble. He goes away. You have Vyan Singh, India's pioneer aviator in Port Blair. He's actually a part of the uprising and he's punished. Now you have these three distinct different people who come together barely a year later in the Navy's plans directorate. And these three people make the plans for the Navy of today. And I think it's remarkable. Call it coincidence, call it something more. It's a different way we have reconciled is with the name Talwar itself. From being a shore establishment, we've used that name for our ships. Uh, I'm so glad Admiral Madhvinder Singh is here. As the youngest commanding officer of Talwar, he made sure that Talwar was the best ship during his time. It won all the trophies. And I think he was the chief guest when the second Talwar was commissioned. So there are ways, the signal school has the Talwar Hall. So there are where, ways in which this memory is taken forward. Uh, and, and, you know, sort of. I just too, remember, too little, too late, I think. <laughs> I, I think you have to that. catch up fairly <laughs> soon now. Pramod, I was going to ask you that. I just two names that quickly came to my mind was one was uh, Lieutenant Nanda, who later uh, Navy chief. And then you had uh, Lieutenant Kohli as well. So two naval chiefs. So it's a total of three Navy chiefs. Three, na three uh, Navy uh, chiefs Adhar, and one yeah. CNC. Uh, so that's, I, that's... I think we all learned from that. Everyone learned lesson. If you see the recollections of Nanda and Kohli and what they've talked about in Admiral uh, 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 Singh's book, Satinder Singh's book, I think everyone learned, uh, put that episode back. There were lessons to be learned in that. I was telling Pramod yesterday the importance of food on board a ship, for example. So, so there are very, many important ways. Mutiny is always uncomfortable. The fact that we, 60 years later, are able to call it uprising, embrace it, make it a part of our tableau, I think tells that we've also come a long way. We've come a long way, but Pramod, I'm going to ask you one question before we break for questions from the audience. Srikant says that... One clarification. Everything that I'm saying are my personal opinions. Of course. Uh, <laughs> So as Srikant as mentioned this point that the Navy is kind of reconciled to this. It's now recognized this as a, a part of its history. The men who took part in this have featured and, you know, ships have been named after them. Why were they kept out of the entire, uh, why were they kept out of the uh, government, the Navy? They were never rehabilitated. The actual people who took part in this were, you know, Well, I wish I had, a, I, I had a, a clear cut answer, but, um, you know, uh, politicians, and here's one, Mr. Dr. Shashi Tharoor sitting here. Um, you know, they, they, they have a professional hazard, if, you, if I may call. They, can, they will always be half truths and half lies, you know. And this is what happened. This is what happened in, in 1946. Uh, Sadar Patel, whom we admire so much, actually had to, um, was given the task of getting the surrender. He promised something beyond his capability at the time. He promised that none of them will be victimized. And unfortunately, even after the independence, well after the independence, 1958, that, um, that the, these ratings were writing to the government and a very terse four line reply would come to them that as a policy, the government had decided that those who participated in the mutiny will not be taken. And those who were dismissed with disgrace will not even be eligible for the civil jobs. Now that I thought was pathetic, you know, of, of the Congress government of the time to do this. And but so there, there, there you are. Now there are many reasons you can, uh, you know, hazard that, you know, they were till 1958, the four Navy chiefs were British. They probably couldn't, could not uh, admit the rebellion, the, the mutiny, mutinous uh, sailors at a time when the Navy chiefs were British. That could, that's a very simple explanation. But 
ostensibly, as I said, they said that, look, we have to have discipline in the independent India. Or, By the way, even Jinnah did that. And he said the same thing that in, in independent Pakistan, we have to have a disciplined force. And we cannot encourage something like this. This, I, those, both are these very weak arguments because they were they were truly freedom fighters. Absolutely, and in fact, Prime Minister Nehru uh, in 1946 said that in Chaupati in that yes, address, that, where he, that, he upheld their right to mutiny because they were. No, he said he, this is uh, by a uh, the, uh, the uh, Sadar Patel was. Uh, was speaking, he spoke first, and after that, uh, no, sorry, uh, I think, well, whatever, um, Nehruji spoke later, and he said that, look, I think um, uh, we, we persuaded these ratings to surrender on promises that we now feel, four days later, we now feel are very difficult to fulfill, just four days later, you know, so... And it, it lasted under a week, right? It was just five days. No, it's five 18, days that 18, shook 18 the empire. Eighteen to twenty third, eighteen February to twenty third February. So it wasn't a year. It wasn't a month. It was just under a week. So with that, we'll open the floor. Just, to just one questions. very small factual thing. I mean, uh, not not commenting about the argument, the, but the reason you had uh, Navy chiefs until fifty eight was because simply the naval leadership then, the Indian naval leadership had been commissioned much later. Unlike the army top brass which were commissioned in 1919, 20 and earlier. The senior Navy leaders were commissioned only around 1939. So you needed, there was nobody know, who was no ready. Doubt. So just that, factually. But uh, before that, you know, I, you promised me one question you were not asking me. So I'll have favorite. to, my favorite story. Oh, yeah, your favorite <laughs> story. I mean, from so I couldn't I have that, to, huh? sorry, even yeah. if it cuts into a, you know, he, he asked me in the last uh, interaction that, which, which one was my favorite story in such a big 400 page book? I said, look, you've got so many uh, children or sons, you are very difficult to, to pick one, but I will in this case put one. And this is, this is to do with um, a small ship called HMIS Katiawar, which was anchored in, in Gujarat. And uh, when they heard of the mutiny, first they decided they, mut they mutinied on the ship and they decided we must sail to, to Karachi because that's where the bloodshed was happening, you know, where the, 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 the sailors had actually been killed. Hub and, and they took the, uh, the captain in, in the custody. Captain said, I've, I refuse to navigate or help in navigation because I will take orders only from my, if this was a British uh, commanding officer, I will take uh, orders only from my, um, from my superior. I will not take orders from you. Uh, this was a big problem because none of them knew well how to nav navigate to Karachi or to for, for that matter anywhere. Anyway, one of them who had probably had little experience started to, 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 to take the ship towards uh, uh, Karachi. But halfway, not even halfway, they heard everything was over in Karachi. So they changed the course and, and started to sail towards Bombay. Now, when they came, came to Bombay, there was a strict order that no ship will enter uh, no ship will enter Bombay waters without permission. What, uh, there was no permission anyway. It was a it was a warlike situation. Yet this was they had just two guns. It was a small what do you call them? The minesweeper. minesweeper. Oh, yes, gotcha. minesweeper. Gotcha. It was a minesweeper, and there was this huge big HMS HMS Glasgow, which was with twelve guns and all kinds of world's best warship abilities, was was standing there. Now they they trained their guns these. The, the HMIS, uh, HMS Glasgow on this small little baby, you know, and so this this was the psyche of the of the mutineers, you know. They said, "All right, we'll take you on," you know. I mean, this was, uh, that's it, a story. It, that's it, a book in itself. Yes, uh, yes. From all that. We'll, it, we'll, we'll, yeah. we'll we'll take you on. The two guns they trained towards them, you know, with fourteen there, with twelve there, and they said, "We'll take you on," you know. They sailed. They yet sailed. There was, as I said earlier, it was eyeball to eyeball, you know, they, but when they, when the captain of, of Glasgow saw what these boys were doing, he, they, he asked all the sailors to come onto the, what is that called? The, the, the sidewalk. 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 On the, okay. And made everyone, made everyone salute uh, these, this young, young, young sailors on the ship, you know, that is, that is what in, sums up the, 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 uh, the mutiny in a way. So thank you for allowing me to do that. Uh, uh, you could raise your hands now if you have a question to ask Pramod. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, 
thank you very much. Uh, just, uh, just two comments. One is that, uh, as you probably know, even in the INA, after the trials at the Red Fort, etc., there was a great debate in the Indian Army whether the INA uh, soldiers should be taken back or not taken back. And uh, the decision that the Army leadership came to was that they could not, because they're mutineers and that served uh, and fought against their own people, they could not be taken back. And that's the one of the reasons that was uh, applicable to even the Indian uh, Royal Indian Navy that the mutineers could not be taken back. Sir, the uh, the INA was declared as freedom fighters. The sailors were never given that status of freedom fighters. So, yeah. uh, so at least that, that they could have been made freedom fighters or given the pensions. They were not even given the pension of a or recognized as a freedom fighter. But all most of the INA soldiers were were given that status. Right, sir. Uh, second point, uh, Sandeep, you, you mentioned 1946. It's an important year because, as you know, the war in Europe has, has come to an end. Uh, Berlin has been divided. The Cold War has uh, started. And the Soviets under Stalin, who was actually supporting the British during the war, have now become enemies. And the communists in India had a very big role to play. In this, we as young officers have seen the effects of the communist influence within the, our lower decks. And nobody mentions the role of the communists. It's there. Because now... It's, it's there in the book. It's there in no, the book. I don't know what, you didn't mention it, but, uh, you know, the, and the, the Blitz and Rusi Karanjia and all these people had a very big role to play. People's Age. People's Age, the communist newspaper, yeah. and yes, yes, sir, it's we there in the book. For, we have my apologies that I didn't mention it in. in we my... have time for one more question, uh, uh, ma'am. Yes. Just a small question. You said the top leadership of that time was very selfish and. They don't want to share the credit of independence. Do you think there should be some change in history books, especially course books, so the young uh, children, the young generation, they should come to know what happened actually? You know, the, uh, the as, as, as I've also said, that the history is written by the current rulers, you know, whoever at that time. That time, Congress didn't want it to happen. It didn't happen. Now, the, the history is written in a different way. I don't know. If this will have a saffron color, it will probably come in. If it doesn't, it won't come in. We have time for one last question. Yes, please. Hi, we've got a question from the readers of Rajasthan Patrika from Patrika Knowledge Series. The first one is that Indian Army is our hero. Any special event that happened during that time valley with our Indian Navy and our Army fought that challenge vehemently and won? Well, uh, the Air Force did. Uh, Army did in a way, before Army could come in, that, that was a big worry that the British um, uh, had, that if all the three uh, forces combine, there will be mayhem in the, in the country, and rightly so. There would have been bloodshed all around, you know. But uh, Air Force did, in a major way. Uh, almost 1,500 Air Force um, of, uh, say, I mean, the airmen actually uh, demonstrated publicly but uh, no, uh, the army was very small at the time. If it had continued, it would have been big. Uh, if I can just add, I'm not talking about the uprising at all, but since the question related to army, navy and air force, one of the earliest joint services operation immediately after independence was called Operation Peace, which had happened in October 1947, uh, the accession of Junagar, uh, where all three forces took part. So I think uh, uh, your readers could read about that. It's an interesting chapter in Indian history. Great. There's one gentleman there who wanted Just, to ask. Uh, uh, yes, yes. We've got one more question yes. from the readers. So we'll have to take that and then okay. we can take one more from One the question audience. here and I'll come to you after that, sir. Certainly. So the second one from the readers is that do you think we are ready to face any war? Is China becoming a threat to us even at sea? Yeah. Shikant, so uh, you want to take that? Uh, well, I, you know, the uh, terms of reference for me is to discuss this book. So I, I don't think it's correct for me to answer except to echo what the chief says, my chief has said. One is 
remember the Indian Navy of today is a far cry from 1947. We are one of the biggest navies in the world. Very, very capable both in terms of hardware, software and people. Uh, second is that a Navy must be, and I'm merely echoing what our chief says, a Navy must be and is always ready to face any challenges. I think the detail, uh, Sandeep, Sandeep can answer. The last question to the gentleman there. Uh, see, in 1962, war with China, we had a great setback and had to sacrifice a lot of uh, our military, uh, military manpower and a uh, lot of area, very big area was also lost. You see what precise, uh, I want to know what precisely was the problem. First, whether there was absolute warfare. Second, whether there was lack of political will. And third, whether there was a lack of pre-preparedness. And uh, these uh, uh, precisely these were the lacuna. What what single one you want that this was the supermost lacuna with our country and how far we are prepared right now? It's a very long and complicated answer to that, but I let Pramod answer that. No, in I brief. mean, uh, look, my my uh, the causes of the uh, 19th. I think I think uh, he answered his own questions with his own answers. You know, so uh, yes, there was a bit of unpreparedness because we it, it did come as a surprise from what I know I'm not a I'm not a, um, a military historian so to say I concentrated on the war of independence so I, I would only know as much as everyone else know but he, you guys are expert but I think he answered the the question the question himself yes I, I think you've done that thank you very much ladies and gentlemen uh, for being patient listeners do pick up a copy of this book it'll throw a light on a very um, uh, you know, uh, a, a chapter of Indian history that's rarely spoken about or documented indeed. Thank you very much. Yes, wonderful book. I've been reading it, unputdownable. I think everyone should buy the book. And just to add to that, the authors will be available to sign these books right there. There's a very cute yellow tent behind the front lawn beside uh, the bookstore where you can get your copies signed. Thank you so much, Pramod Kapoorji, Commodore uh, Shrikant Kesnoor and Sandeep Onnithanji for this rather enlightening and engaging session on the idea of historical warfare in India in terms of the Navy and so much more and so much beyond. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, for being a part of this session. And we also thank Rajasthan Patrika for their support. May we please request uh, the speakers to accept a small token of our love and appreciation. And we make sure we try and style this with the clothes they're wearing just to keep the style element of the festival alive. They can also choose their scarves. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, please note that we will be back with the next session shortly. Uh, <laughs> uh, the Ottomans. Thank you so much and see you soon.